I, li listen, I don't drink. I've never drank in my life. I never have. No, no interest in drinking. If you want to drink, I'm fine with it. We knew who was going to play it. We sat down before. Man, we were like, yo. I said, guys, listen, I don't drink. All that's about one do, all do. I'm not drinking. In fact, my man John Williams, who was number two. John, strong Christian. Man, we were in a pledge session, and one of the big brothers said, get on your knees and bow down. John said, I don't bow down to no man but Jesus. Mm. We were like, with no big ass deal. It was like, just, just sit down, kneel. Bruh, I'm not lying. Imagine there was a brick wall standing right next to me. And imagine me trying to pull that brick wall down. That was John. I was like, I turned to Fred. I was like, his ass ain't bound down. He, <laughs> dog, he was, I'm talking about John's body was, he was a brick wall. His body was that rigid. He's like, I ain't bound down. Now, the brother who said bow down was a pastor. He was like, what? I'm a pastor? He's like, I don't care. I ain't bound down to no man. So again, some cats would be like, man, y'all line was crazy. But we had a level of conviction as black men that we said, no, nah, man, this ain't what we're doing. Well, I'm going to tell you, y'all line was crazy. Let's start there. <laughs> And, 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 and I applaud your conviction, but let's be real clear. The way y'all was, was so bold with it, it, it ain't too many, it ain't too many chapters. It ain't too many lines. It ain't too many pledges during that period in time that would have made it across the burning sands. But guess ain't what? Ain't nowhere in the world. But guess what? That's why, see, and this is why I'm trying to get cast of things. But that's who you wanted. That's mm. who you. That's who you want there wearing you your go. ladders. Well said. Well said. That's the brothers you want. That's you want well said. guys who chose say who were doing stuff before they got into the frat. You want that? Why would you say y'all? Nah, you can't come in. You want that? And that's the whole point. And that's why I'm trying to get cats to change. With this is the deal. And what we're talking about has everything to do with what I do in my career and what I always talk about. When we can reprogram black America, because we do need a massive reprogramming. That is what we desperately need. We have to reprogram how we are doing things and what we're creating. So we talk about how I challenge the divine nine. I'm challenging them to go beyond being so concerned about what's happening internally. Dr. King said in his book, uh, where do we go from here, chaos or community? And Because it, it, it also ties into what I do with media. He said that there are four institutions that are prime position to liberate black America. He said the Negro church, the Negro press, Negro fraternities and sororities, and Negro professional and business organizations. He said none of them have fully committed themselves to the liberation of black people. He said Negro fraternities and sororities should be stopped concerned about snobbishness. He said Negro church should stop being concerned about uh, what you're going to get up yonder when people want to experience heaven on earth. And he said the Negro press needs to stop falling for, uh, needs to be focused on the substantive and maintain its position as protest organs and maintain its militancy and not be concerned about the trivial. That's what he said. So for me, how I look at the black church, black media, black owned media, how I look at our black organizations, we have to have a reckoning where we are, where we redefine. So when I challenge civil rights groups, when you're getting corporate donations, that's fine. But understand the million or two million you might get from that corporation, they still owe black folks 500 million to a billion. And so when you're saying, fine, we'll take your donation, Wells Fargo or Bank of America or any other institution. But uh, what about black transportation contracts, engineering contracts, legal contracts, event planning, PR, black owned media? See, it's expanding our view. How are we now as King said in his speech, April 3rd, 1968, 
How are we operating as a collective to transform black America? So it's the exact same thing. And so when I am critical of hazing in that process, I am seeing it as the tearing down and in many cases, the maiming and killing of black men and black girl and black women, as opposed to building up when the drum major died at Florida a and I I don't give a damn about no band. Ain't n there is no kid that should go home in a body bag who's trying to play a damn instrument in the band. That's right. But again, right. we go. My high school, bro, black high school in Houston, they did the exact same thing. They hazed, but they had a rule. If you were first chair, you couldn't get hazed. Who was first chair? <laughs> I walked in first chair. Them dudes were so mad at me, they went and got cats who had graduated, who were in the band at Texas Southern, to come compete against me because they said I was arrogant. D fuck you. I'm good. I practice. I studied. I should be good. But again, that's a state of mind. It's a level of excellence that we have to be demanding at every stage. So, yeah, I've been a little different. My, you think? And it can't, you think? Dude, cats, and cats get mad. Like cats got mad when they were like, "Oh, oh!" When I told a story, when I when I, when I cussed out Kyla Muhammad, they were like, "Oh, that didn't happen." I'm like, "It did happen." I'm like, "Y'all actually think I'm scared? I was scared to challenge him." Man, look, that I said, I said that wasn't the only person who I went off the record and cussed out. Dude, it's just, man, listen. What people don't understand is when you have a high level of self respect and you demand self-respect, especially when it comes to black-owned media, you're going to have some situations where you're going to go at black folks and they're not going to be happy. That's fine. But you know what ends up happening? That person's going to respect you more because you stood your ground. That's always been the case. Don't care. I know you got married in um, 01. So you've been married for a while now. Yeah, my second marriage, yeah. Okay, what the hell is it like being married to you? Like, like usually the man after a while he shut up. Whatever the woman oh, said. Oh hell no! Just, oh hell no! I, I, I I'm listening to you. Oh and hell I'm, no! I'm thinking. Hell no! And, and I'm, <laughs> I'm like being married to this dude. Hell no! Your wife must be a saint, man, because but, ain't no way in the world, especially a black woman. She's not going to let you out talk her. And, okay, and see, see, I right don't there. see where so, you would stop see, talking. See, right there. The, see, you use the, op what's the operative word you just used? Out talk? No. Black woman? Nope. What, what you tell me then? Let. Mm. I'm a grown ass man. You ain't let. Like, so, I'm on a cruise. First of all, I hate cruises because I can't play golf every day. So we had one stop, I played golf. Next day, we had another stop. Shit, I'm going to play golf. I'm getting off the cruise, and the guy who played with us the day before, he goes, yo, how your wife let you play golf two days in a row? I said, what the fuck you mean let? <laughs> I said, I'm a grown-ass man. I said, I didn't ask permission to go play golf two days in a row. My ass going to play golf. What the hell you mean Let. All these folk acting a fool because Sierra wore this sheer dress to the Oscars. I can't believe Russell Wilson let his wife out the house. That woman 37 years old. What you mean let? Man, I don't. See, this, again, this is the problem I think a lot of people, a lot of people get up. You with a grown ass woman and I'm a grown ass man. Ain't no let. I don't, let me tell you something. My wife ain't got no say-so or veto power over a damn thing in my closet. I cannot stand watching dudes. We can be shopping and they a damn mannequin. A woman be like, stand there, let me see this. Oh, hell no. <laughs> woman ain't dressing me. <laughs> my daddy, my dad had two sons, three daughters. My dad taught us how to dress, including my sisters. 
taught us how to pick our clothes for my mama when we would get the credit card for Pally Royal to go get her a Mother's Day gift, a birthday gift. Man, let no damn woman dress me. I'm grown. No, you ain't got no say so. I'm not running a damn. I was at a Howard Charter Gaylord Brothers like, damn, man, I love that African outfit you had on. My wife wouldn't let me wear one. I said, let. I said, man, give me your phone. I made a video for him, and I said this to him. I said to his wife, I said, I said, how are you going to decide what this grown ass man going to wear, dude? <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't understand that that concept. I don't. That's a, just the dumbest thing in the world to me. So my look, my house is great. This real simple. You can work. You ain't got to work. That ain't up, up to me. When we go on vacation, rolling, playing golf. I ain't doing no other. Look. If you want to go rock climbing, I ain't going rock climbing. Knock yourself out. My philosophy is you on vacation, I'm on vacation. That means you doing some shit by yourself and doing stuff by myself as well. So everybody can be happy. But I am not going to abide. Just, man, listen, it's like uh, you got some women. Uh, uh, he won't eat this here. I'm not eating nothing I don't want to eat. I'm grown. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I'm telling you, people, I like, I don't understand that whole concept. I don't. So, I mean, look, you could take, that's going to be for somebody else, but I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. I'm going to be respectful. Absolutely. I'm not going to sit here uh, and diminish you, dismiss you. But what's not going to happen? I'm, I'm not going to be sitting here treated like no damn child and I'm grown. So, yeah, I don't understand the uh, let. I, mm -mm. See, right? See, that's the, you use the wrong word, let. You know, I wish she was in the room. I, I, really should, do, I guarantee I you, would, she'll tell you. I'm no, I would stop this interview right now, and and, and put her in the seat that you sitting in. Go and ahead, have a whole different conversation. Send an email. <laughs> send an email. Go to jackiehood.com. Send an email. She'll tell you. Oh my goodness, she'll tell you, dude. She bought me two Brooks Brothers ties. I went on the radio in Chicago and said, I ain't wearing these ties. They, they, they were ugly. I ain't like, she came to my daddy. I said, I'm not wearing these ties. I don't like that Brooks Brothers look. My daddy got them ties. <laughs> you, you can, straight up, I went on the radio and said, y'all know I ain't wearing these ties. Oh, Roland, wear it anyway. No, that ain't happening. If I don't want to wear it, I'm not wearing it. I'm grown. Roman, you are a wild boy. That's, how, <laughs> how is that wild? I don't understand. It's, uh, here's a, you know why? Here's the idea. When you see a woman and she walk out and uh, she know her skirt too short. You know why? Because she constantly pulling on it. You know what that means? You self-conscious. It means you walk out of the house so the whole night is ruined. Because you constantly tugging and pulling because it's because it's on it's in your mind. Because your whole time you thinking, what they thinking about, what they saying about me. Okay, what so you can't, oh my skirt too short. That's why my deal is take the shit off at home. Listen to mm. what I'm saying. You if you if you this is my philosophy. If you're gonna be I say I said say this to my wife or any woman I've ever known, if you're gonna be self-conscious walking out the door. You're going to be self-conscious the entire night. It's going to be a miserable night. So don't wear something that you're not totally confident. When I walk out the house, bruh, I'm wearing what I'm wearing. I don't give a damn what nobody thinks. Oh, he got an African outfit on. Sure do. Kiss my ass. Oh, he, Scott. Yep. Kiss my ass. I know he ain't coming here with some cowboy boots on. Sure did. Kiss my ass. Because you didn't pay for it, so I don't give a damn what you think. That's just straight up. I don't care what you think. Oh, man, you driving a 2008 Navigator? Yep, some bitch been paid off since the day I drove it off the lot. And it still runs. Kiss my ass. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Look, my daddy said, to, this is my dad told me, it's a true story. He said, son, when you pay all your bills, then you get to make all decisions. I said, got it. He didn't say some bills. He said, that's when you grown, when you pay all your bills. True story. My first marriage, I was living in Mansfield, Texas. My parents came to the house. 
And I forgot what it was. And my daddy wanted to comment on something in my house. And he did. And this is the look I gave him. <laughs> Which was the same look I grew up seeing all the time. What my look said was, you don't pay a damn thing here. <laughs> and you know what he said? He sort of looked, he went. He went, this way, he went, son, you're right. And, and, and went quiet. Because he didn't pay a bill at my house. You don't get to comment on shit at my house. You ain't paying nothing. In that moment, he went, I'm telling you, I went. And he went, son, you're right. <laughs> That's the deal. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, let's move this thing forward. Uh, <laughs> you got me cracking up over here. It's true. It's I true. <laughs> Dude, it's true. You remember? People can just sit and look, man, I, it's true. I don't look. When I talk about speaking truth, again, I, I again, I told the Khalid Muhammad story, cast I mean, all, a lot of his followers they got all mad. I'm like, man, I don't care what y'all think. I'm telling you, I know, what, know exactly what happened. Look, when I ran the Houston Defender, Lee Brown was the mayor of Houston. He was an alpha. Uh, he pissed me off. I kept introducing myself. Now I'm running the top black newspaper. Again, true story. So he goes to South Africa. Man, come at white media, killing them, killing them. Because he took like four police officers, charged the city like 75, 80,000, you know, for their travel and expenses. So I get a phone call, either his press secretary, chief of staff, or something like that. Hey, Roland, uh, this is so-and-so. We want to bring the mayor by your offices. We want to talk about this trip to South Africa, the importance of trade in between the city of Houston and South Africa. You know, we get a lot of criticism. He talking. I was like, you done? He's like, yeah. I said, fuck Lee Brown. Mm. I said, this is exactly what I said. Quote, I said, you motherfuckers didn't call me before you left. I said, so now white media kicking your ass. Now you want to call me to bail your ass out. I said, no, we ain't doing that. I said, I said, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to kick his ass in the paper this week. And that was a TV, there was a TV show called Newsmakers that was on this NBC affiliate, Channel 2, that we had a seat on and I was on. I said, I'm going to kick his ass on Sunday. I'm going to kick his ass next week. And y'all going to learn not to disrespect black media and ask me to bail your ass out when white media is on your ass. Click. That's exactly what I did. I was... That was nine. That was nineteen ninety nine, at, at, at the Houston Defenders. So we're talking. That was twenty four years ago. I was thirty. That's exactly what happened. And again, I ain't. You're not gonna dis. You're not gonna disrespect Hillary Clinton's first lady. She come to da She come to the Martin Luther King Center, South Dallas. It's a hundred yards from the Dallas Weekly. I'm the managing editor. So I go by. So they had two rooms. They had a room over here and a room over here. And a room over here, they had lights and everything set up. So like for video or photos, I said, well, what's going to be going on in here? Oh, she's going to stop in here. She's going to visit with the kids. And this is where the media is going to be. I was like, what media? They said, we got a pool. I said, well, who's in the pool? They said, Associated Press, UPI, Dallas Morning News, Fort Worth Star Telegram. I said, no black on media? I said, no, nah, y'all ain't bringing y'all ass to Black South Dallas to the MLK Center with a black paper 100 yards away. Ain't no black on media going to be in this damn press pool. I said, we, we, we got a damn problem. And they were like, well, you know, sir, we've already, you know, we got the advanced team. I said, I don't give a damn. I said, you need to go get the Secret Service agent in charge. I said, but the First Lady ain't going to be coming to Black South Dallas and ain't nobody black in this damn press pool. They went and had a conversation, came back, said, uh, uh, Mr. Martin, are we going to be adding you to the press pool? I said, yeah, I thought so. Bruh, that's what I'm talking about. Now, anybody, if anybody wanted to dispute that happened, in my studio is, is two photos of Hillary Clinton talking to some black kids. I shot the photo. Mm. I was in that press pool. So what I'm la laying out, that's, that's been me my whole career. I am not afraid to challenge no body to hit anybody i'm gonna stand up and fight for my for my paper for the radio station for the tv network you are not going to disrespect black on media and you ain't gonna disrespect me as a black man it's not gonna happen i don't care who it is that's just real